Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Dynasty After Dark. I'm your host, Calvin Timms. You can find me over on Twitter at TDC underscore Calvin. I got my co-host Dale at Dynasty underscore Dale. And we're going through our full off-season recap. We're almost done. We've only got two more divisions to go. But we're getting there. We're getting pretty close. We're going through the NFC West right now. And then we'll be able to get some new content out there for you guys. Maybe we'll mm-hmm. do a mock draft this week. It's been a couple weeks since we've done one. Uh, just to change up the content a little bit but we'll see until then dale how we doing today hey i'm I'm doing really well uh and i'm really excited to talk about a couple good teams uh here here coming up well 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 well, for today's stint at least uh uh we're going to talk about a a very excellent team i'll have to say will will you so yeah we're going through the west and uh it's competitive at least for the most part Mm -hmm. and um yeah, if this is your first video in, thank you for checking us out. We're going to be talking about coaching changes, some of those impacts, some of the free agent signings, some of the guys that they lost, the the draft impacts for the team. And then we're going to talk about all the positional players at the end of the video, maybe lace a little bit of it in throughout the the whole thing and you know, just give our whole thoughts and all of our our breakdown here and um if you've been checking them out Thank you so much. But if you can, just leave a little like and a little comment on the video down below. We like to hear your guys' thoughts, and it helps us out with the algorithm, gets it out there to more people, which is really all we're trying to do. We're just trying to grow the channel and and have some fun talking some football. So hopefully you guys enjoy this. But, again, check us out. Check out some of the other videos as well if you can. Now, with the Niners, I think we have to start with the quarterback situation. It's kind of the thing that is – the whole off season and all the conversations this entire off season have been geared around the quarterback situation. They brought in yep. Sam Darnold as a free agent. Um, you know, they also brought in Brandon Allen. You know, nobody's talking about him. He could be uh, relevant, I guess, <laughs> considering their their quarterback woes that they've had. I guess right. But Sam Darnold, Trey Lance, Brock Purdy. Um, you know, obviously. All the talk has been, oh, Brock Purdy's the guy. No, Trey Lance is the guy. No, Sam Darnold's the guy. Uh, PFF coming in Mm -hmm. from the top rope. No, it's actually Sam Darnold. But what do we think that these guys are going to do? Who do we think is going to be the starter? And, you know, I've come out many times and said that it needs to be Trey Lance. And, you know, I'll give my brief synopsis and I'll throw Mm -hmm. it to you here. I like it. Brock Purdy, he was very good last year at the end of the season. But it's after they got Christian McCaffrey. We have no idea what Trey Lance would have been. He got injured after a monsoon game and in like the first quarter of the next game. He never even had a chance to show anything, you know, never even had a chance to really put a season together. So I get it. People are out on him. But we have no idea what Trey Lance can be right now. This offseason, Trey Lance goes to Patrick Mahomes, quarterback coach, and supposedly this guy is a quarterback guru and can fix anybody's um, like throwing motion and mechanics and mm-hmm. all that stuff within like a week. Like he can figure out what you're doing wrong and remedy it within a week. He's come out and said that Trey Lance is going to look like an entirely different beast. They are in training camp right now. It's just rookies, so we'll find out next week how he's actually going to look for the, the whole package there. Brock Purdy's been throwing for about seven weeks now. Uh, he had the Tommy John surgery. It's likely that he'll be healthy for week one, but he's probably not going to be practicing with the team the entire offseason. The team has said Brock Purdy's our guy when he's healthy, so it's mostly going to be Trey Lance and Sam Darnold, though, in training camp to compete and, and work with all the skill players and all that stuff. So in my opinion... You have to say Brock Purdy's a guy. He was too good at the end of last season. He didn't really lose his job. You can't lose your job because of injury like that. It, it just doesn't sit well with the locker room for that to happen. But ironically, that's the exact same thing that happened with Trey Lance is he lost his job because he broke his leg. So I think it's going to be Trey Lance. I think we're going to see him next week. He's going to look a lot better from a mechanic standpoint. You know, it's he's got to get some of that game knowledge in there and everything like that, mm-hmm. but you only get that by playing. If you do not play Trey Lance, you are doing a massive disservice to your team and him as a person. And I do believe Kyle Shanahan's coaching staff want to do right by Trey Lance. So either trade him or play him. I think that he's going to be starting somewhere if it's not for the San Francisco 49ers. So 
That is my take on these guys. Let me hear your breakdown. Um, first things first, I think it, it was a mistake for the Niners to draft Trey Lance at three. I think they had a lot better options. And for what Kyle Shanahan does is not what Trey Lance does best, in my opinion. So, you know, I, I feel I feel they had a lot better picks potentially. Like even Mac Jones would have been better in that draft for this the this style of offense. So you know, that's why I think they're going to go Brock. It's the Brock Purdy route. Um, I really like Brock Purdy. You know, I, I I mean, I'm more into the college scene than you are. So, you know, I, I got to watch him quite a bit, like with Brees Hall and stuff like that at Iowa State. So I, I really think it's going to be Brock Purdy. And the only reason he was a seventh rounder last year in last year's draft was because of how poor their team was as a whole. Right. Uh, the year prior at Iowa State, so mm-hmm. you know, I, I I really have I really have belief in them to do very well with Brock Purdy. You know, I, I think Trey Lance has kind of lost the locker room a little bit, and I, I I really feel I really feel it's Brock Purdy's job to lose. So you know, I I, I think if I were a betting man, it's I I would go Brock Purdy. Um, you know, um, and that that's just I, I I feel all of these weapons are more fantasy relevant. I think the team runs smoother. Awesome, I, I really right? think things the, will be a lot, a, a, a lot more clunky to me with Shanahan's offense with Trey Lance, in my opinion. That's the and that's the mystery, right? Like it, yeah, what you're saying absolutely. is entirely possible, absolutely. but it's also yes, possible yes. that we Trey Lance could be a, a perfectly fine pocket passer. We just 100%, don't know. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And that's, I, I, I I do agree. Yeah. Yeah. That's my only problem with a lot of people, and I know you're not you're not doing this intentionally, but there's a lot of people out there that are intentionally being misleading about this like oh he's never yeah. going to be a good pocket passer and it's like we don't know right. we you we have no information on this and um like yeah it's Brock Purdy does seem to fit what Kyle Shanahan wants more in a quarterback yes. and he's like the perfect yes. embodiment of a quarterback for for yeah. Kyle Shanahan yeah but 100% at the same time, Kyle Shanahan had his choice of Mac Jones or Trey Lance, yeah. and he picked Trey Lance. So, uh, you know, they well, came. Well, it, well, 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 it's it's that and Fields and, you know, yeah, all these yeah, other had, quarterbacks. You know, he yeah. didn't have Wilson. Yeah, and, and, I think he would have wanted Wilson right. out of all those guys. But, you know, yeah. he had his pick of Fields, Mac Jones, and Trey Lance. And he, he specifically yep. picked Trey Lance. Uh, their, their general manager came out and said that that was Kyle Shanahan. Um, coming out, and John Lynch said that it was Kyle right. making that call. So, you know, I don't think that we can completely write that off. And, you know, there was a, mm-hmm. the one thing with Kyle Shanahan too. I, I'm not the biggest Kyle Shanahan fan as a head coach, but right. if you go back and he's very consistent with this, he doesn't say a much, but when he does say stuff, like people assume that he's just kind of lying and stuff. And, you know, he's, he's mm-hmm. doing the coach speak and all that. But he yep. did have a press conference this offseason that said, he's like, Trey Lance, he can easily win that job. It's mm-hmm. Trey, we yeah. still believe in Trey Lance. Like, we still believe that he just needs time to develop. And we're going to give him that opportunity and we're going to build around him. He said that in a press conference earlier this offseason, but nobody wants to remember that because at the same time, right. John Lynch is saying, well, it's it's uh, Brock Purdy's job to lose. Well, yeah, obviously. But if he's not healthy through all a training camp, it's pretty easy and likely that he can lose the job in training camp just because, like you said, Trey Lance doesn't have the locker room, but he hasn't had a chance to win the locker room. Right. Not yet. Anyway. Right. So, you know, he could easily do it this training camp if he's looking really good. So, yeah, I, I just think it's crazy that a lot of people, you know, completely ignore that. But I'm just I'm a Trey Lance. I like Trey Lance. I do. And I, yeah. I think it's and, and, unfair. And I, I, I do, too, as well. But, you know, I just think I just think that this isn't the team that he could lead. I, I, I think I agree. I, I, you know, I, 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 I think I, I just think he's lost the locker room at this point and we will see. And he's lost that's happened, Kittle for sure. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, kind of absolutely. Old. And, 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 and that is the locker room to right. me. Like he's the voice of the locker room. So, yep. you know, it's, it's, it's just something to monitor. Yeah. So, that's enough about the quarterback talk. We, unfortunately, we have no idea. Everyone is is making definitive statements, and all we know is that right. Jimmy Garoppolo is not here anymore, and that's yep. about all we know. So they brought in Pretty Sam much. Darnold. Sam Darnold's going to be the number three guy. I don't really care what anybody says. It's going to be Purdy and Lance, unless they trade Lance. Then Darnold has an actual right. opportunity to be the number two guy here. 
but some of the other players that they did lose, and this is what their defense took a really nasty hit this year. You know, they lost some some big names there: Hassan Ridgeway, um, Aziz Al Shair, the linebacker that was just going nuts last year, Emmanuel yeah. Mosley, Samson Ib- Ibukam, Ibukam. Uh, Jimmy Ward, they've lost a ton. Charles Amenhew, yeah, um, Tavarius Moore. So this defense might be taking a pretty big step back this upcoming season. You couple that with the fact that they moved on from Demarco, uh, Demico Ryan's as their mm-hmm. defensive coordinator, and they do a great job of kind of tunneling and, and channeling talent into coaching positions, right? Uh, but he's going to have a little bit less to work with. This might be kind of a competitive rebuild year in terms of the guys that they lost in terms of who they brought in as well on the defensive that's, side that's of the ball. That's fair. I, I don't think they're going to take any step. I mean, they might take a marginal step back, but they I were really, really, really they... good last year. They were yes, like a top yes. three defense. So Yes, I- I- exactly. So, I mean, I still think they're a top 10 defense, probably okay. still a top five defense. I think in, that in they're probably opinion. closer to middle of the pack, but I th- I could be wrong. I think they I, I, I think they have an elite front seven and in, in this day and age, like that's what you need. Like they have, you know, you know, you know, they have Bosa on one side, they have, you know, Armstead on the other, like they have these elite talents on the I did get Javon Hargrave still. uh from the Eagles. He's a very yeah. good interior Yeah, so so guy, so, I, so I am yeah. not I am not worried about their defense. I don't think they're going to take nearly the step back you think sure you know uh, you know i i i i i still think they're going to be a defensive led team primarily and and that's what they've been primarily since shanahan's been there in my opinion yeah to their so, to the to the be, to the benefit of the team it might yes. not matter too much because it's the nfc right? exactly so, <laughs> that's true you know, if, that, it, if that's they're true. Uh, yeah. if they're around 12 or 11 it might not really matter until you get to the playoffs and the right. super bowl and everything but uh but yeah. then they might have it all kind of figured out so um you know the the one downside is they really didn't make too many free agent signings for skill players their team is right. very loaded so i i get it but um mm-hmm. the the one other thing too really quickly is they did lose mike mcglinchy their right tackle yes and that yes. could be a big hit you know they tried to bring in matt pryor from the colts to kind of replace him a little bit but i do think that that's going to be a little bit of a step back you know i don't know the depth that well some of the names on the depth for the line so if you know if you're a niners fan out there and you're watching yeah. um and you know the the new guy that's going to be taking over feel free to let me know if, if he's actually good or not but um i do think that mike mcglinchy there's a reason he got paid an astronomical contract this last off season i think right. that, uh, he's a very good player so that could be a yeah, little bit of a concern there um but you know, all in all, I think they'll be fine. Like I think mm-hmm. Shanahan is is more than fine. In the draft, they really didn't do much. Um, I was telling Dale before we started recording, I hated their their draft. Uh, they didn't pick until round three. They took a safety, Jair Brown, out of Penn State. Then they took Jake Moody, um, Money Moody is his nickname, kicker out of Michigan. He's very good, to be fair. They mm-hmm. lost Robbie Gold, so. You know, it's not a terrible pick if they can use him, but in round no, three, I don't think no. there's much competition for him in round three or four. So it's just, that's the only right. reason I didn't love that pick. And then Cameron Latu in round three as well. He's a tight end linebacker hybrid from Alabama. Yeah. We talked about him with our, our rookie breakdown. Not the most uh, exciting first three picks in the draft. Round five, they take uh, oh. Daryl Luter Jr., cornerback out of South Alabama. Uh, Robert Beal Jr., linebacker out of Georgia. In round six, D. Winters, linebacker out of TCU. So they're really trying to rebuild the, the defense defensive side of the ball a little bit with some youth, which, okay, I can I can respect that. Um, round seven, they took tight end Brandon Willis out of Oklahoma, uh, wide receiver Ronnie Bell out of Michigan, and Jalen Graham, linebacker from Purdue. So, again, nothing, nothing crazy from the fantasy oh. perspective. Um, well, Jake but, but if, 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 if you think about it, if, if, yeah, if, if you do think about it, though, like for their for it's for their second and third and, and for their second and their first third round pick were traded for Christian McCaffrey. Right. So right. so 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 I, I would I think I would rather personally me, I'd rather have Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, that's you know, than than, <laughs> than those two picks. And right. then and then their first round pick was traded to Miami for the Trey Lance 
trade right basically so so you know you know i i think i think that's why they didn't have the sexiest draft because i right. mean they're in 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 two they're already very loaded and you know i personally like the jake moody pick i think he's an excellent kicker you know i mean sure i i i understand there's a lot of analytic guys that don't like taking kickers in the first you know four or five rounds which i i, I understand that but you it, know like me, he's a more for, I, w- yeah and for me it's just it's not that i don't like the pick like i don't mind mm-hmm. kickers being drafted i just don't think that there's much competition for these picks like ever this is like taking a kicker in a redraft league in round nine it's like is it gonna kill you no but you probably can wait till round 12 13 14 you know what i mean so it, it's just the the i don't think you had to take him that high you know maybe they did maybe they're getting reports i i, the I other think teams, I, I, I i i think they did because i think some other kickers were going to go off the board eventually which we did have a round four kicker as well yeah true um you know you know in, in stuff like that so like if you know it's your guy true. just go and get him yeah you know and and and, it, yeah. and, 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 and 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 that's where i'm not super worried I mean, I was a little confused about the Cameron Latu pick. That one was just odd. Yeah, man. that that was odd. Where they could have went. I mean, I mean, they could have got another wide receiver. Honestly, yeah, exactly. Which is, yeah, yep, which, which, which I feel is what they need because they did resign like Ross Dwelly is is coming back. Like they still right. have George Kittle. Like they still have all these tight ends. Yeah, so I, it, I, I thought it was very interesting. They have a million players right now. They're gonna have yes. to cut so many guys. It's gonna be crazy. But yep. yeah, like I said, the Jake Moody thing. You know, it it was a bad pick, but at the same time, if you're getting reports that and you need a kicker, and he's a very good k- kicker, his his nickname yes, is Money is. Moody, yes. right? Yes, he is. It, it's that for a reason. It means he's very accurate. If you have reports yep. that he's going to be taken higher than consensus, all right, fair enough. But yeah, yeah, I don't. That's just the the hard thing is like it's always like, well, if you don't take him, you never know where they're gonna go. But it's very likely he could have probably been there in round five maybe you know it's just like eh. he 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 wouldn't have been there in round five in my opinion but that's just so. but that's just me and and we can move on to our <laughs> uh, uh to our dynasty impacts yeah so obviously quarterback is a little we, we touched on it already um you know brock purdy people thought i was crazy though you know i'm a big Trey lance guy I did a startup last year during the playoffs, during the playoffs. So this was a very, very early startup. And I took Trey Lance in round four, or beginning of round five, right around that turn, right? And it's a super flex league and everything like that. People thought I was crazy for taking Brock Purdy in round nine. In round nine, they're like, oh, this guy's right. never going to be it. And now look, he might be something, right? right? So, um yes. As much as I say I like Trey Lance, I I do realize that there is real opportunity for Brock Purdy. So, um, you know, I do think that that can be something. Now, Trey Lance, late first, Brock Purdy, I think that they're pretty close in value. Give me a late first for either one of these guys, but I would prefer to wait until I know which one it's going to be. That's the only problem there. Um, do you have any difference there, or we you want to jump into the running backs? Let's go ahead and go to the running backs. All right, so, yeah. That's our value for the quarterbacks. It's just such a, a mystery that maybe winning is, might be the, the best, yes, best strategy. Yes. So obviously you got Christian McCaffrey, Elijah mm-hmm. Mitchell, um, Jordan Mason, Kyle Uzcheck still here, Ty, Tyron or Tyrion Davis Price, TDP, who they drafted early <laughs> last year, not this this last draft, but who I mean obviously Christian McCaffrey is the number one guy here. People are taking him number one overall in redraft. He's still a mm-hmm. top five dynasty running back for a lot of people, which I can understand that. Um, I don't think that the the drop off for CMC is going to be anytime soon. The question Agreed. is, if something were to happen, who's the one you want to own behind him? Is it Elijah Mitchell, who also suffers from injury concerns? Um, I that's the one I want it is, is Elijah is, is Elijah Mitchell Mitchell. Like I, I, I understand he does suffer from these injury concerns, but I know he can play. And, 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 and that's the biggest thing for me. Like we, I mean, like we saw a, a Tyrion Davis price a little bit last year, you know, like he was a third round pick, but you know, I think, I think the 49ers, I would, I would I'd much rather than burn a third round pick on a kicker than a running back. Because they have no luck with picking running backs, in my opinion. At least they're not early. very good at it. I will say that. 
No, 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 they are not. So but the if, good if news it was is any... they have Kyle Shanahan who can make any of them exactly. good. So relevant, relevant. So yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, after CMC, it, it's Mitchell for me, and you know, I and mean, you're washing on, your hands. On, uh, <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. Yep, I'm kind of with you there. Um, Elijah Mitchell, he ha- is someone that's kind of fallen in favor. It sounds like from a lot of people out there, just because he was so banged up last year. But I do think that there is a solid opportunity. You know, yep. um, didn't play much last year though because of injury. So you definitely got to keep that on your mind when you're when you're thinking about going and getting him. Yeah. Yep. Um, wide receivers: Brandon Ayuk, uh, Debo Samuel. Number three is kind of up in the air. Chris Conley, mm-hmm. Danny Gray, yep. Juwan Jennings. They have so many guys. I don't even know who's going to make the roster because there's so many right, similar right. players, right? Ray Ray McLeod, Daz Newsom. Um, I mean, is there a third guy you're even considering here? Or is it just I, those I, I th- top th- two? I, th- I, th- I think if I were to roster somebody, it would be Chris Conley because he has had – he has produced relevance. Yeah. You know, yeah. 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 He, he has been relevant, you know, like with his stint in, in Kansas city, um, you know, so, you know, I, I, after Samuel and I, um, I really wouldn't want to trust any of these guys unless there's an injury, which you can almost bet on a Debo Samuel injury any year, unfortunately. <laughs> So, yeah, but if he stays healthy, though, you got top. Yeah, five yeah, I, 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 absolutely. <laughs> so you know, yeah. So I mean, I mean, you might have to play him at running back, and then he might be able to stay healthy. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Um, I do think that the the whole Debo thing is a little bit misleading, um, in my opinion. And the problem is, I don't think Debo and um. Jimmy Garoppolo are the best match. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I do think that, I don't want to say that, that, you know, the, the good year for Debo Samuel was two years ago in 2021. Mm-hmm. Part of the reason that he was so good, he had 1,400 receiving yards, but the problem was he did most of that after the catch. And last year, I right. think that they tried to use him as more of a, a, you know, his yard per target was extremely low. It was much lower than it was two years ago when he was so good, right? Um, right. In 2021, they his average depth of target was 11.7 yards. Last year, it was 6.72. So they used him Ooh. like at right. the line of the scrimmage a ton, which is not his best usage in my opinion. Now, he was kind of a little bit low in his yards per catch, which means he wasn't busting off some of those big runs that you can kind of expect from him. Maybe that was injury. We don't really know. But I do think if Brock Purdy's out here, I like Debo Samuel a lot. Yeah. I know people are very, very high right now on um, Brandon Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk played and, 17 games last year. Yep. He finishes the wide receiver 15, where Debo finishes 40, right? He had 114 targets, 78 catches for 1,000 yards and 8 touchdowns. My argument against this is, and the reason why I'm not as high on Ayuk as a lot of people out there, I don't know if there's a higher ceiling than that. Like, he's never going to be the primary guy when you're you're paying Debo Samuel that much money. You're paying Kittle mm-hmm. a lot of money. You're paying yep. Christian McCaffrey a lot of money. Like, I don't see a world where Ayuk is the game plan, the focal point of the offense. If he's Fair. the number two guy... I think what, you know, wide receiver 15, he was one of the most consistent wide receivers last year. Never mm-hmm. really gave you that big, big week until um, week 17, the playoff game. Uh, he had he had nine catches for 101 yards. But other than that, you know, he had a couple of games above 20 uh, the whole season, but mostly right around 13 to 16, pretty much every single week, except for a couple here and there. So, mm-hmm. Is there a case for Brandon Ayuk to be? Have we seen everything we've seen from him? Um, I mean, I, I hear what you're saying, but you know, I think I, I know the quarterback play since he has been there has been pretty mediocre. It's been up and um, down. It's been very up and down. You know, like Jimmy G was injured every other game. It felt like, and then you had uh, Nick Mullins come in, which he he kind of ignited the offense a little bit for you know a a, a, a couple games. So. Um, you know, I think if they have a stable quarterback, I think we could see 
very similar numbers to what we saw last year. You know, you know, mm-hmm. you, you know, I, I think I think it could go up a little bit. And I think having I think actually having I mean, I understand the the thought of if Christian McCaffrey's there that he's gonna take up a large part of their passing some part of their passing attack, which is true, mm-hmm. but you know, I, I, I think they're gonna be able to split it between those four guys pretty pretty well, honestly. You know, so I'm not, so. I'm not super worried. There's gonna yeah, be I'm not worried about that. One's gonna be really good, right? And, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, so I'm not worried about that. And and then I know that they do gadget him into some plays. Same with Debo. So, you know, like I, I, I feel he's gonna be relevant enough. You know, I, I, I mean, I would be very happy to invest in him as a as a mid wide receiver too for the next couple of years. Like, I think that's where he could get. Where, where it's it's where he's able to go. Who you would know, you and, rather and kind have? of stay at? Who would you rather have, Debo or Ayuk? Ayuk, Ayuk, because I, I would, I would rather have Ayuk because I know I'm going to get that stability. Um, he's he's not as injury prone as Debo, and I, I know I can rely on him. So yeah, that's I'm... that's and 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 plus he's, I mean, how much younger is he? He's not much, only two years. Yeah, only, only only two years, but like he does have less wear and tear on his body. That's fair, and yeah, this is where Dale and I kind of see it differently. Like if I'm investing in one of these two guys. I do think that the switch has kind of happened. I, I'd have to check some some rankings and everything, but it feels like Ayuk is more valuable than Debo right now. Okay. So at cost, definitely. If Debo's cheaper, give me Debo. But you take cost completely out of it. Let's say they're both the one nine, right? You can get the you have the one oh nine. You can get either one of these players, right? Give me Debo just because I know what the upside of him is. You know, upside of wide receiver three. That's what his ceiling is going to be. Ayuk, it feels like his ceiling is going to be wide receiver 15. So I, I would prefer the upside just knowing that it comes with more risk, right? More roller coaster. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I would just rather have the potential that I can get a top five guy versus the floor of a, a top 15. So, um, yeah, I don't I don't fault anybody for that. It's just a difference in, in styles, right, in opinions. Yeah, there. So, absolutely. Uh, quickly, let's just talk about George Kittle. He's the only tight end you really want to roster. There's not, yep. I know that, oh, this, this guy's going to be the next great tight end behind him. There's not. I mean, Ross oh. Dwelly, Troy Fumagalli, Cameron Latu, like, I don't care about any of these guys. Even if, if George Kittle gets injured, I don't think any of them are relevant for fantasy, so I just do not care. I, I, I think they could be interesting. I, th- I, I, if, if, don't if be that guy. Kittle, don't do it. Uh, well, I, I think they, I think, if if you can pick him up on a waiver, mm-hmm. if it'll gets injured, the guy I would pick is Ross Dwelly because he's done. I agree. I agree. That's the one I that, would that, want. That, that, that's the only thing. I'm. I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to roster any any of these guys. <laughs> yeah. I'm so that's the thing. Honest, so. Like I think that if Kittle gets injured, someone else is going to finish as a, as a tight end one that's not on this team. Essentially, that's the way Agreed. I kind of look. Yeah. So, Agreed. Yeah. Um, yep. That's why I don't want them. You know, personally, but yeah. Now, George Kittle, he's a little bit of an interesting case, right? Because finishes the tight end number three last year in 15 games, comes out, kind of kills you the first month. You know, the first month he had a total of 11 points. Um, actually, through week five, he had a total of 18 points. So, not great. But then he instantly comes in with 16, 22, 13 kind of has another down week, 25, a couple down weeks, and then just kills it at the end of last year. 25, 31, 13, 19, multiple touchdowns in all those games. That's kind of what George Kittle is, in my opinion. He's a touchdown threat, right? He had 11 touchdowns yep. last year. Not his best yardage totals last year, but um, I do think that the the quarterback play was kind of part of that, the, the ups and downs of the whole season. And it, yep. this is what is always so ironic to me is is um, George Kittle and Trey Lance have literally never played together. Literally. I think they might have played a, a one game in 2021 together uh, where they right. both were, were um, in it. but And I think Lance played 71% of games or something in 2021. But other than that, these guys have never played together. So obviously George Kittle is going to want to go with the guy that gave him, you know, seven touchdowns at the end of the last year you know i i understand that from his perspective but everyone's saying like oh he's he's not high on trey lance well what reason does he have to be high on trey lance you know what i mean so right. um i do think that george kittle though right now is being a little undervalued 
I think that there's some potential. 100%. I don't think that he's going to be as boom or bust this upcoming season, but every mm-hmm. single one of these players for the Niners, that's just the Niners MO. They're going yeah, to be game yeah. playing certain ways every single week. So um, any yep. difference of opinion there on Kittle? No, I, I completely agree. You know, I, I think as long as Kittle's healthy all year, he's going to be very consistent. You know, I'm not worried about him. You know, I understand people's people kind of are kind of off of him because he's going to be turning 30 this year. And, you know, I, 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 I do feel that's a, a little part of it, you know, but I, 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 I know that tight ends. Yeah. I mean, I, I do know that tight ends, the tight end age in their and their downfall is a little bit later than your typical right. like wide receiver running back. So I'm not worried about it. Like I, I, I still think he has a few more years of relevance. So like, you know, if, 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 if he's this cheap, go and get him in my yep. opinion. I think that he has, I mean, he finishes the tight end three last year. Mm-hmm. You know, that's kind of his ceiling is his top three guy. And yeah. he's going as, I think, tight end seven right now. It's just, it's kind of crazy to me. So, um, yeah, I, I, I agree. I'm with you. Go get him if you if you can. So, mm-hmm. uh, any last thoughts on the Niners, though, before we wrap this up? Nope. All mm-hmm. right, so clearly Niners have had a – up and down offseason. All of it is is focal around is centered around the the quarterback position and who's mm-hmm. going to be the starter. I personally don't think it matters for all the other skill players. It only matters for which one you're going to get the fancy points from at the quarterback position, right? Whether it's going to be Trey Lance or it's going to be um, Brock Purdy. I think that Debo, IU, Kittle, whether it's Lance, whether it's Purdy, doesn't matter. I think that they're all going to be good. Uh, Kyle Shanahan is going to scheme this up that it's going to be successful regardless. So yep. um, I think that the overreaction on some of these guys is a little crazy, but it is what it is. And once we get into the actual season, take the discounts while you can, because once we get there, yep. it's going to be huge. And you're going to say, wow, why did I do that? That was so stupid of me to to fade all these players for no reason. So um We'll see. It's only like I said, they're in training camp right now for all the rookies. Next week, we'll have Trey Lance out there. We'll have Sam Darnold throwing the ball to these guys, and we'll be able to see how they can kind of do. So, until then, thank you guys for joining us. And if you can, one last time, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff on the channel. We appreciate it. Uh, we are going to be continuing the NFC West tomorrow with the uh, Seattle Seahawks, and yeah, just a. Uh, Good old time here in in the West. It's a very competitive division. Obviously, yeah, you think that the Niners are going to win this division? Hundred yes. percent. Yeah, I'm I'm still with you. So yeah, even with a de- a downgraded defense, I think that they're they're in line to smash this division. So right. That said, until next time, thank you guys so much for joining us. You can find us again on Twitter at tdc underscore calvin and at dynasty underscore dale. Until next time, have a good night.